Hi there and welcome to The Artist Craft. I am your host Stacy Cochran and we've got an outstanding show for you this week. First up on tap we have an interview with poet Bruce Later, whose recent collection Landscapes of Longing was published by Main Street Rag Press based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so Bruce is a local poet and we had the opportunity to interview him in studio a couple of months ago. Uh, and he actually does a reading of his poetry from Landscapes of Longing, which is really cool. I'd love to get more of that on the artist craft. Uh, and it was just an absolute thrill to, to interview Bruce. And Bruce, if you're watching the show, I want to say thank you very much for, for coming down to the studio and doing an interview with us at the artist craft. We're here with poet Bruce Lader, who is the author of Landscapes of Longing, published with Main Street Rag Press, based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I thought to get things started, it would be really cool to have Bruce read from his collection. So he's going to be reading from a poem uh, titled Custody. Custody. Suspending a minute of his daily card game, the principal escorts in a newbie. Remand, he says. Yours until his trial killed somebody. Oh no, not in my class of socially maladjusted kids, not when they're learning to roll with the words that sting like razors, tattooing reps, mug shots, full face profile of the 15 year old bolt in my mind, a cell block cage crammed with his long tossed away time slams in Rikers Island prison. The boy claims the vacant chair next to my desk and kicks back. Principal scoots to his office with a view of Rockaway Beach. I got a gun stashed in the sand, the boy warns, so don't mess. The others caught wind of his infamy. Their noses are in the civics lesson. I could file a grievance with the union, quit, or challenge him not to go truant, help him hang out with books and jazz, try to impart my bourgeois savvy, he reaches in his ragged pants, pulls a square of loose leaf, unfolds it. Give me a pencil and an envelope. Show me how to write this letter for my girlfriend. Well, let's talk a little bit about the process of writing a poem like uh, Custody or any of the poems in Landscapes of Longing. Uh, what is your process like for writing poetry? Well, I do a lot of editing, I, so I try to get as many words out as possible and try to get as much of what I want to write out as possible. And then I work kind of like a sculptor works, where I chisel away what I don't want and I leave out the parts that I think are uh, belonging, sometimes to another poem. Something, there is a series here and, uh, about the students. And this was one of the uh, poems about my teaching experiences in this setting. Uh, so I needed to be careful about overlapping with other poems. Uh, I needed, yet I wanted a connectedness to it. Uh, the process was very difficult. I needed to deal with my own feelings about the situation, which uh, stayed with me over many, many years. Uh, I needed to soul search my own prejudices about uh, the sort of uh, situation in which I was put, where I felt as if I was in custody at the same time time as the students were, although I was a professional teacher, I was also under some kind of supervision and uh, watched. Um, and, and there were other people involved as well uh, in the teaching uh, of these students. So I could not have done this by myself. I needed to also reflect on the work that other professionals were doing and bear in mind that they had invested their lives in working with, with these children. So um, it, it was not an easy process. Uh, but I must say that after writing Custody, I felt that I, I had nailed it to some extent, where, um, where the situation was clear to me. Uh, the student was in my mind, and I could uh, go back and relive that, uh, that classroom moment when that happened. It was not uh, an isolated moment. The other situations similar to that happened. But that remained in my mind because it was so dangerous. And uh, we, in many ways, we go back to the things that are uncomfortable more than the things that were comfortable. And they turn out to be the more effective uh, works for us. So when do you know that a poem is done? When do you know that, it, that you've got it right? 
Well, it's been said that poems are never finished. Um, I actually don't believe that. Uh, I feel that this is one that I do not want to go back to. Uh, that I succeeded in capturing the moment and the feelings that were involved. Uh, but of course, there were other poems with it. So if it were the only poem that I had written about teaching these students, I would not feel as if I had finished the poem. I hope that answers your question. What does persistence mean to you, and how does that factor into your career, your writing life? Persistence is about vision for me. Uh, not giving up, believing in yourself as a writer, as a professional author. Uh, it's difficult as a poet because you don't get that kind of feedback where you know that, okay, you've earned a certain amount of money, uh, you've become a commercial success. Uh, you have to listen to what the people who you care about are saying, and you have to um, examine your own work and first, the craft needs to have evolved. And that process, for me, uh, took decades to get to where I could write a poem like Custody. So what is the, what is the story behind Sabotage in your collection, Discovering Mortality? Discovering Mortality also contains uh, many poems about students and children, uh, young adults who are surviving the environment of having to live on the streets. Um, sabotage involved many emotions that were similar, but in a familial context. Now, being raised as a, um, as a Jewish youngster in a Jewish family, um, a reformed family, but nonetheless, uh, cultural Jews who were practicing uh, Seder and uh, abiding by the holidays, but yet not being kosher. Uh, there were a lot of conflicting emotions in the family about uh, around, surrounding the holidays. The sabotage is about the Passover ceremony. And a child's wanting to be independent and yet feeling under the supervision and control of the father uh, that's a father-son poem, and also having uh, to perform as a, um, as a Jew conducting the ceremony. So I felt like, like I was tr rebelling against some of the supervision and having to do this, and yet feeling like I was caught in, in the middle. So. It, it was a difficult uh, poem to write, and in conflicting emotions were involved, uh, where I was rebelling against my father, being in control, and yet respecting him as an adult, as a father figure. So uh, I don't know if that poem comes across as, as being rebelling, but it was very much the, the child wanting to be independent and rebelling. Is, is that kind of tension, is that uh, sort of dialogic, if you will, uh, essential to, to writing a good poem, where you've, you've got a conflicting emotion about you know, a memory or an experience, uh, whether it's uh, wanting to inspire a student who uh, you, know, you feel somewhat threatened by, is that, is that essential? To, I know to what you're poetry. saying. I know what you're saying. Nice poems, for me, bore me. They're, bo they're just boring. Conflict is something that, if not, in, is not in every one of my poems, perhaps not in every one, but is certainly um, what I am going for. I, I'm going for things that are not pretty, for things that are, are uncomfortable, and not only for me, I want the readers to feel uncomfortable, not necessarily disturbed, but I want to shake them up in a way where they feel, okay, well, maybe there's something that I haven't looked at in my own life that I could look at a little bit more carefully. Uh, that's how I've lived my, uh, my own life. And the conflicts, although difficult, have gotten to be a little bit easier 
as I've been dealing with them, a lot of these things that needed to uh, come out have come out and have I've gotten vehicles for them and I know how to approach them now. Uh, so I'm a little bit more comfortable with them. Whereas in discovering mortality, they were more difficult. With landscapes of longing, I've got them mostly under control. Where the, before that, the conflicts were mostly overpowering me. And I was, I would say, mostly at their, under their control. Now they are under my control. Uh, fortunately, uh, I feel like now I've become the artist that I need to be in order to write about them. Hey folks, you are watching The Artist Craft on Raleigh Television Network Channel 10. I am your host, Stacy Cochran, uh, and you've been watching an interview I had the opportunity to do recently with poet Bruce Lader, who is the author of Landscapes of Longing. Uh, I want to get a couple of plugs in for the Raleigh Right to Publish group during this brief intermission, uh, and then we'll get back into the rest of the interview with Bruce. I am the organizer for the Raleigh Write to Publish group, which is the most active writers group in the state of North Carolina. It's a free group to attend. There's no membership fees to join our group. Uh, I see it as a community service that I can provide uh, for uh, you know the folks here, for you here in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, we try to keep all of our events free, and certainly there's no membership fees to, to join our group. And we've got two big events on the calendar coming up on April 10th and then April 17th, the following week. Uh, on Saturday, April 10th, uh, we're going to be doing a social party and film screening of an independent film that I produced and directed last fall uh, titled The Poem. Uh, and this is, it's mostly an informal kind of meet and greet, a great, a great way to, to socialize with writers and creative types, uh, filmmakers, and some actors in your community. So if you're watching The Artist Craft tonight on Raleigh Television Network Channel 10 and you want to get involved in something creative and fun and healthy and positive uh, in your community, I would encourage you to check us out on the web at writers.meetup.com 500. And what you'll find at that website are all the events that we've got on our calendar for the spring and summer of 2010. The two that I want to get a plug in for here are the event on April 10th, which is our film screening and party uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Tompkins Hall. You can find out all the info about parking, driving directions, uh, that sort of stuff uh, at the website writers.meetup.com slash 500. Uh, and then the second event that I want to get a plug in for is on uh, Saturday, April 17th uh, from 6.30 p.m. until about 8.30 p.m and that's going to be at Quail Ridge Books uh, on Wade Avenue here in Raleigh. Uh, and the topic of the event that evening is going to be uh, how to get a literary agent and how to publish your first book. And we have a special uh, guest author, Kim Wright, who has just published her first book, Love in Midair, uh, with a major New York publisher. And we're going to be talking with Kim about the process to get a literary agent and to sell your, your first book to a major publisher uh, on Saturday, April 17th at 6.30 p.m. at Quail Ridge Books. Again, for both of those events and for all the events that we have with the Raleigh Right to Publish group, uh, you can find out info at the website writers.meetup.com slash 500. Again, that's writers.meetup.com slash 500. That's for the Raleigh Write to Publish group, which is a free writers group, the most active writers group in the state of North Carolina, uh, my home state, Raleigh being my hometown. Uh, and I'm thrilled to encourage you and invite you to, to check us out on the web. And then if you're so motivated or inclined, I would really encourage you to come to some of our events here in our community. Well, let's kick it back into the interview with poet Bruce Lader, who is the author of Landscapes of Longing. Enjoy the rest of the interview. Thanks so much. Is it just perseverance that gets you to that point? Or is it, do you, can you point to one thing that says, okay, I, I remember a point where I was more in control of, of those emotions? It was gradual and an evolving process. I, I would say that publication was certainly a turning point. 
uh, having that validation, that uh, vote of confidence is certainly important. Uh, so those were turning points. What are some of the central themes to landscapes of longing? The central, th I have three central themes. Uh, I look at justice from three points of view, the personal, the social, and political perspectives. Uh, those perspectives in the book change. They don't all change abruptly. As you go through, I wanted them to change gradually, and I didn't necessarily go in order. Uh, but I wanted to show that longing, the internal inner landscapes of longing uh, were different from the external landscapes, that we construct our own landscapes as we live and grow. And I hope that I'm still growing. And the, the important thing for me is to grow as a writer, as a poet. Uh, and I, by, to do that, you need to stretch. And you, you need to um, look at things, perhaps new things, that you haven't looked at before, and try to grapple with them and tackle them and uh, hope that they are uh, things that you can live with. Um, landscapes deals with political issues. The middle section uh, was looking at our political scene from different points of view and assuming personalities, personae, uh, that I wouldn't ordinarily be, I wouldn't ordinarily be in their clothes. I certainly would not want to live in a torturer's clothes for very long, but some of these people, you know, are in favor of torture and uh, certainly in favor of uh, capital punishment. Others are against capital punishment. So I needed to look at opposing views, these conflicting views. When you were writing each of these individual poems, which I gather was over a, a long period of time, did you have a collective um, book in mind, or do you just work on each poem in its entirety at that moment? That's a good question. Uh, for a chapbook, I, I do have a central theme. Uh, when I'm writing a full-length collection, what I do is I have a group of poems which I think may be working together, one file. Then there'll be another file of related work which I'm not as certain go together. Uh, then the third or maybe even a fourth file, and they turn out to be the sections for the book. Now, with Landscapes of Longing, I knew that this book was about justice, but I didn't know how, how I would eventually organize the book, uh, whether there would be sections, whether they would all be interconnected in one part. Uh, as I lived with the poems and got to know them better, I knew more what they were about. I don't always know what they're about immediately, and they seem to fit together as a collection, a long, uh, full-length collection. Would you like to, to read one of your poems from Landscapes of Longing to, to take us to the break here? I'll read Our Own Blood, uh, which is part of a series of poems that are political satires. As soon as I can find this poem. Our Own Blood. The generals deliberate on the climate of war, insulted that some harebrained foreigners might beat them at seizing the capital. The generals read barometers of insiders, tally missiles and unmanned drones. Their temperatures escalate as the budget deficit dives and the foreigners move forward. The supreme commanders would like nothing better than to turn the tide, reduce the expense of casualties to zero. Risk only what's necessary, leave nothing to accident. Fingers like rolls of million dollar bills, toying with the buttons of boom. The generals reckon lives, plot exact targets via satellite surveillance. The security of our native land hovers like Apache helicopters on a do or die sortie. The generals know it has always been us or the enemy the battle between alien blood and our own. Hey folks, you are watching The Artist Craft on Raleigh Television Network Channel 10. I am your host, Stacy Cochran, and you've been watching an interview I was 
had the opportunity to do with local poet Bruce Later, who's the author of Landscapes of Longing. Well, we've just about run out of time for this week's episode of The Artist's Craft. Uh, And in conclusion, I want to get one final shout out for the Raleigh Write to Publish group. The Raleigh Write to Publish group is the most active writers group in the state of North Carolina. It's it's hosted and, and its base is here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a free writers group to join. There's no membership fees to to join, and you can find out all about the Raleigh Write to Publish group at the website writers.meetup.com slash 500. Two events on our calendar that I want to get a plug in for here at the conclusion of today's episode of The Artist Craft on April 10th and on April 17th. We have a couple of events. The event on April 10th is going to be a social party and film screening of an independent film uh, that I produced and directed last fall uh, in conjunction with the Raleigh Write to Publish group. And it's a social, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, You can find out information about the event on April 10th, this party and film screening uh, at the website writers.meetup.com slash 500. If you're watching the show and you want to get involved and participate in something that would be fun, creative, and exciting in your community, I'd encourage you to join us on Saturday, April 10th uh, at 6 p.m. at Tompkins Hall. Again, you can find out all the information, driving directions, parking information, all that sort of stuff at our website. The second event that I want to get a shout out for, a plug in for, uh, is on Saturday, April 17th, the following Saturday. We're going to be hosting a panel discussion at Quail Ridge Books on the topic of how to get a literary agent and how to publish your first book. That's on Saturday, April 17th. We'll be having a guest author speaking. I'll be moderating the discussion with her. Her name is Kim Wright, Kim Wright, and she's just uh, published her first book, uh, Love in Midair, with uh, a major publisher based out of New York. And we're going to be talking with her about how she got her literary agent and how she sold this first book to a major publisher. Uh, so mark your calendars for Saturday, April 10th and Saturday, April 17th for two really cool events that I would encourage all of you to check out uh, and join and participate in. You can get involved in these events here in your own community uh, and they're free uh, to, to, to attend. There's no membership fee or anything like that. Um, again, one final time, one final time, <clears throat> excuse me, one final time, you can find out information about those two events as well as all of the events for the Raleigh Right to Publish group at the website writers.meetup.com slash 500. Well, for all of us here at The Artist Craft, I want to thank you very much for tuning in and watching this week's episode. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes in April with authors uh, Randy Davenport. And in addition to that, we have New York Times, number one New York Times best-selling author Harlan Coben on tap, who uh, is visiting us here at the end of March. And we'll have his interview on The Artist Craft Uh, in the month of April. So check us out Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursday evenings in the 8 p.m. hour here on Raleigh Television Network, Channel 10. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode.